It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. But I want my credit when it's all said and done because it's the work that I put in to get to this point, to get to this stage, the discipline that I that 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 I put in to get here. All the years of hard work, I put my work in during training camp. I did everything that I was supposed to do. I was on my diet. I did everything that I was supposed to do this camp to be the best Devin Haney. So when I win, give me my credit. Any concerned about the weight? Nah, I mean, yeah, no. On your side about yeah, his no, weight? Yeah, no, not nah. uh, on his side. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He said he's we bet five hundred thousand per pound, and uh, so we'll see if he makes if he makes Devin, the weight. If you, if you do win. Will you be frustrated if people start to bring up Ryan's antics before the fight and maybe don't give you that credit? Yeah, I mean, because like I said, I worked hard to get to this point, so I would hate to put him to discredit me. But at the end of the day, they're gonna do what they're gonna they're gonna Are say what they're gonna say. Devin, Devin, um, what did you? Oh, sorry, sorry. They're gonna say what they're gonna say. They're gonna do, and it, it is what it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the best Devin Haney that I can possibly be. This shit is bigger than Ryan. It's, I'm I'm chasing greatness. I'm, I'm, I I want to be mentioned with the greats when it's all said and done. Ryan's just another opponent. Devin, what, did you make, what did you make of the reluctance here, I suppose, from, from his dad and the team to, to not want to take the bet from Ryan? From, from Ryan? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if he didn't want to take the bet or if he just was telling him like, "Don't even feed into to what my dad was saying." So, Devin, in 2014, in 2014, when you fought Ryan in the amateurs, you did meet him in the center of the ring. You had him yeah. on his back foot. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you need to remind him that you know you were putting pressure on him and he was basically? Yeah. Um, Ryan will see. Ryan will see that, you know, I'm, I'm I'm on a different level. I'm levels above him, and uh, I see it being an early night. I don't see Ryan being able to 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 go to full twelve with me. His antics will 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 give up on him. It's, it, it it will show. All this bullshit will show. Are you planting? It will your, come out. There's no secrets in boxing. Are you planting your flag at 140? We see Eddie Hearn right behind you. He's obviously signed Subriel Matias. He's made a big investment. Kitchens and others in the 140 pound division. Are you making a statement about your future at 140 on Saturday night? Of course, 140 is my division. Um, that's the, the that's the division I'm champion at. So of course, you know, uh, I feel like I'm the best at 140. But I, and I want to fight the best fighters at 140. Hey, Devin, you, say, you, say, you, say Ryan, you say Ryan is a C level fighter, but Tank say Ryan is the best fighter he's fought. So what is that? What is it about Ryan that made the lot feel like he's the best fighter? I don't know. He shared a ring with him. Um, maybe he fought all C level fighters. Maybe he was a C plus. <laughs> How hard was it to just stay fully focused, uh, you know, knowing that possibly any moment the fight could have like uh, could have had another opponent in the ring because of everything that was. No, I mean, I'm mentally line. strong, you know. I got that tunnel vision, so it's like it it, it was what it was. Um, whatever it was gonna be, I was going it, it was gonna be. Like I said, I'm chasing greatness. I want to be, you know, a great. So Ryan's just another opponent on the list. You took a title. You took a title fight to the Bay Area, specifically San Francisco. Your last fight. You're bringing back championship boxing to the Barclays here in New York. Talk about that, champ. Um, bringing championship boxing back to Brooklyn. No, I mean, um, this is this is big. This is big for for me, my family. You know, uh, for 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 boxing. Um, I'm happy that it's in Brooklyn. You know, a lot of people weren't happy in the beginning. Ryan wasn't happy, but uh, I knew that it would, you know, it it would be a big moment for boxing. And what better place than media capital of the world? You, you, like you, had a, you had a fiery build up with Regis Progre, but how much more personal does this feel? I mean, at the end of the day, it's all business. At the end of the day, um, he can say what he want to say. I can say what I want to say. I'm gonna go in there and do what I gotta do. He can go in there and do 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 what he gotta do. It's it's, it's nothing that he it's nothing that he can say that can get me off off my game plan. I'm a, I'm here for a reason. So uh, it is what it is. He can outside the ring. I don't fuck with him. No Devin, no face Devin, off today. You, Whose decision was that? Commission. Devin, do you uh, do you embrace kind of the inevitable comparison that'll come from this fight versus what Tank was able to do with Ryan? You know, both in the ring and at the box. No, I mean I'm a, I'm a, I'm my own fighter. At the end of the day, I got my own path. Uh, my journey is my journey. Don't you guys can make your comparisons all you want. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. So piggyback off what you said, you feel like a stoppage is obligated? We'll see. Thank, Thank you, Devin. Guys. Thank you, Devin. Thanks, Eddie, you got a second? Yeah. I mean, talk to us about what you saw earlier on stage. I'll be, I'm sitting there in the audience. Listen. I was cringing. Um, I'll cringing. just be honest I've with you. Like it, but Listen, I mean, I think that this is boxing. This isn't uh, a six-foot putt to win the Masters where you have to be so in the moment and 
mentally and emotionally composed. You've got to go out there and fight. And maybe this newfound Ryan Garcia will help him. Maybe it will help him dig deeper. Maybe it will help him be more aggressive. Or maybe it will make him capitulate on the night. But that's the beauty of, of the sport, that you are exposed in front of the world in the most brutal capacity. And that's what will happen in here on Saturday night. It all gets real. The social media, the, the rubbish, the, the screaming, the shouting. You're about to go into war with another man. And you will be exposed on Saturday night if you are not ready. If you were on the other side of the table, though, and that was your fighter, would you be concerned at all? A lot of people ask me this, you know, would you have pulled him out of the fight? It's too, we, we don't know. We've not had conversations with him. You guys haven't seen him in the gym. But you've got good people around him, like Derek James, like his family, like Golden Boy, where you would hope those guys respect the sport enough to pull him out if they don't think he's ready. So I think he's ready. I actually think it's going to be a very dangerous weight. fight. That's another story. I actually, when he lifted his top up, I actually think he's going to make weight. I didn't yesterday. Yeah. But you I think like he's going to ride it the right way with the promotion, though? Everybody's entitled to do it. I mean, listen, as a promoter, I don't hate it. The only thing I hate maybe is the fact that people maybe believe that he wouldn't make the fight. And that's why now you're seeing it being a late sellout rather than an early sellout. What were, what were your initial thoughts when he started booing you up there? That's all right. I mean, I listen, I've been watching him on social media like a hawk. But haven't we all? I mean, that's why people say, is it good promotion, bad promotion? I've been glued to it. It's been like the Truman Show. Right? Like, you know, you remember that film where it's like, is this actually real? And I don't know whether, and I think, I think that you're seeing uncharacteristic behavior from Ryan Garcia, but then also like him just rolling with it. So some of it I think is like not put on, but extreme. And the other is that he's just maybe out there a little bit, you know, um, but he, look, he looked in good shape. Eddie, when you came out to the US, uh, this was known as a PBC venue. Mm. It's now become a Golden Boy, the Zone venue. Talk to us about sitting at that table here at the Barclays, and can you see potentially matchroom fights taking you know, place you know here what? at this venue when in New York City? When we came here, um, you know, we actually held a fight here many years ago when I came to America and I was promoting for HBO. Yeah. And that was Danny Jacobs, a big baby Miller fought here as well. It was a long time ago. This is a great venue, great, great venue. And I, I'm pleased to see big time boxing back here now. And obviously it's open, you know, back in those days. You couldn't get a date. You were blocked from all dates. And now that's not the case. So great to see big time boxing back at Barclays. Now, just switch gears a little bit. Tyson said, where's the 25 million? Did you promise him 25 million to fight Conor Ben? And are you willing to offer Tank 25 million to fight Devin Haney? Uh, the answer is I offered Tank Davis 10 million minimum guarantee plus upside on the gate and the pay-per-view. So probably somewhere between 15 and 20 million to fight Conor Ben. Um, he didn't want to do it. It's fair enough. No problem. I don't see, I, I worry about the Devin Haney tank fight because there's no way Devin Haney would fight under 140 pounds. So tank would have to be up at 140. And eventually, you know, you ask Devin Haney there about unification fights, etc. I actually see Devin Haney moving to 147 eventually. You know, I mean, he's going to fight. Obviously, he, he told me off last week because I said I think he'll vacate rather than fight Sandor Martin. He's already given me the instruction to try and make the Sandor Martin fight next because I think he wants to maintain his belts. And I like that. I'd love him to fight Subriel Matias, but in time I see him moving to 47. I mean, who's to say, you know, in time, Devin Haney against Boots, that's a, that's a fantastic matchup in time. But I would like to see Devin unify, or attempt to unify the division at 140 before he moves to 147. We well, mentioned 147. Think about Matias, what's your thoughts on Matias saying he's not interested in fighting Devin Haney? Like, instead, he wants to fight Regis Progre because Devin is not a big draw and he doesn't sell. No, what well, the fight that we need to make is Subriel Matias against Teofimo Lopez. That's a good one. That's a serious fucking fight. And also, Subriel Matias against Devin Haney. After he fights Liam Paro, which is a very tough fight, a lot of people writing him off, he, will, he should look to unify the division. You guys know, everybody in boxing knows how good Subriel Matias is. He is a bad, bad motherfucker. And if he gets through Paro, I'm going to be looking to make unification matchups for him. Now, Eddie, you talked about 147. Your biggest signing, obviously, recently has been Jerome Boutenis. Mm. Connor's dealing with Connor issues. Can you provide an update on that? And what is the potential of that happening, a boots Connor fight? Yes, it's there. I'm more interested at the moment. Obviously, he's got uh, Cody Crawley's. He's mandatory. He has to get that out of the way. I would like to make boots against Stanionis. I would like to make boots against Barrios as well. I think now there's a good opportunity to make big unification fights for boots, whereas previously there probably wasn't. Crawford, uh, Spence, they all know how good Jerron is. 
Um, and if you can bring the other guys into the mix and pay them well, I think they will fight Duran Ennis. But he'll be out in July, hopefully, bring him home to Philadelphia and then want to make a big unification matchup for him, ultimately leading to what I think is one of the biggest and best fights in the sport, which is Terence Crawford against Duran Ennis. What about Conor Ben? Uh, he'll be back. We have to wait on a decision from the board and UCAD. They're all talking at the moment. I think next week, hopefully, you'll have some, some news on that. I would like Connor to fight Stanionis or Barrios. In can the he fight in the U.S.? Can yes, he... yes. So yes. That's... He's not suspended anywhere in the world at the moment. So he can fight in the Mideast, he can fight in the yeah, U.S., yeah, yeah. just but not in the U.K.? We want, we want him. It's been nearly two years since the test. So you've seen a lot of other fighters, and I don't think he's played it perfectly, but you've seen a lot of other fighters who have got off in three and six months getting cleared in less of a fashion than he was. Eddie, Eddie. Eddie Reynoso said that the offer you gave Canelo was disrespectful. That's why he... Who said that? Eddie Reynoso. Did he? Yeah. Mm, not sure he did, but please send it to me if he did. Okay. Eddie, Thank switching you. gears a little bit. You just had a really big recent signing, Deontay Wilder. And, you know, I think it took a lot Only of Only for one night. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, let's talk about it. You guys had a lengthy history. He said a lot about you. Mm. How does it feel for you to have him now on your team at what I'm sure is a lot less than the hundred million you guaranteed him? Yeah, no, look, time? I've always liked Javante. The problem is in boxing, people get told stuff. People get people who have um, agendas will tell fighters certain things, and before they've even met you, they've already decided how they feel about you. And obviously, I said a lot of things about Deontay Wilder because you know I was emotional. I was a bit younger. I wanted to fight, find, make the AJ fight. He said a lot of stuff about me, etc. So. This was a situation where His Excellency said, you're allowed to sign someone for the heavyweight wildcard fight in the 5v5. And I wanted to sign what I thought was the best heavyweight available. That's Deontay Wilder. I think he's going to knock Zhang out. And then I think you're going to see him back into the uh, the Wilder fight, uh, the AJ fight, etc. So he's a very, very good fighter. If he believes in himself, I think he'll be back with a bang on June 1st. So let's talk about that, Eddie. The... Deontay Wilder. Talk to us about the temper and the temperament of Deontay Wilder. Yeah. A lot of people question his temperament after the Hawaska, uh trip that he kind yeah, of... Yeah, look, sometimes on. you have to find yourself. You know, and he went through that process. Everyone's got personal issues they deal with in their life. Some of them you don't know about. But the look that I saw in his eye in London and where, when we were talking to His Excellency was he's back and he's ready to be the old Deontay Wilder. It's one thing saying it. If he can do it, I think he'll knock Zhang out. And um, I will see you Is guys he really your way. captain in the 5v5? Absolutely. I've okay. chosen him as my captain. Okay. He's the most experienced fighter. He's the most accomplished fighter on the team. And I want him to carry the matchroom flag and, and win this tournament. Who's Warren's captain? Uh, Hamza Shiraz. There you go. Eddie, Thank you. Eddie. Win gold now. IPMB is giving away 524 karat gold coins to our token holders worth over $2,000 each. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, great news. It's amazing. It's never been easier to own gold, so join the raffle now.